Hey everybody, Wather D here, and we now begin our Let's Play of Ye, CEO of Philgana. Another note is that Adol actually made the shore in One Piece. This is not a common thing in this series. Now, let's introduce our two main characters here. We have red-haired Adol, and we have blue-haired Dogie. Basically, Adol is our silent protagonist with those obvious characteristics, and Dogie is our all-talk, some-action muscle man. Not so much a bodyguard, but just kind of like the translator of Adol. And, of course, we get greeted with reality, where we already see vandalism. Unfortunately, I think this is vandalism of the religious sort. What a piece of crap. I cannot believe some of those people. However, we'll just let it go and consider that this journey might not be very safe. Oh, crap. We already got wolves running around, too. Where are the hunters around this place? Jeez. Well, looks like Dogie's left behind again. Because, you know, he never takes steps. Wow, so even Dogie's gonna get in a bit of this mess? Ah, oh, crap. Okay, so the AI is definitely on the smart side. Because it just decided to surround somebody with an ambush. And it, this ambush is now even happening to a poor, innocent lady. Uh, boy. Oh, crap. Yeah, the AI is definitely not dog. Oh, no. Well, nice knowing you. Nope. No, no, of course Adol is going to make it in the nick of time. And we get greeted with controls, because this intro is actually going to let you get a bit of fun in. So, off to a really good start here, honestly. Not to mention the music is a great touch. Now, you're thinking that this game might have a bit of a button magic to it, and you're probably a little right. But, as you can see, jumping and downstabbing is also a thing. But, wait, that's not all, guys. Guess what else you can do? You can activate your super self mode, where you can basically swing your sword twice as fast, enabling more butt mashing, and have slightly more defensive capabilities. Now the thing that you also should be noticing is the bars at the bottom left of the screen, and stuff that you can tick up. This is going to be an important thing in accordance to this game. And of course, the young lady is smitten by Adol's bravery and strength. Not to mention that he has red fricking hair. That's pretty awesome. And Dogie arrives late at the scene. You need to get into shape, bud. I know you're growing muscles out of your chest cavity, but seriously. Adol was here quite faster than you. However, it's good to note that Dogie knows how to defend himself and those muscles are not just for show. Now, let's see if this young girl has any importance. Uh-oh. Dogie, manners, come on. Don't talk about what you've been doing while you were off screen now. Uh-oh. That face tells me that, uh... This girl knows Dogie. Dogie, you didn't run out in during a wedding. Oh, she's happy. So, I guess that means you are just good acquaintance. Dogie... Why are you forgetting? I'm pretty sure this girl is going to stomp on your toe. Uh, yep, she's going to hurt, hate you a little bit. So apparently Dogie may have smacked his head against too many walls, so that could be a prop. Oh, okay, there you go. Guess maybe he smacked himself against the wall of this, his brain. And there might have been some misrecollection here. So Dogie and this young lady is now introduced to Adol and you the viewer, the player, etc. This girl's name is Elena, Elena Stoddart.
I'd say that's a pretty sweet intro, considering all how the game started in the past. I mean, you get a bit of action, you get a bit of introduction, and you also get a nice opening, honestly. I mean, that just capped it off. And now, the thing about Redmont is that we've arrived here in the middle of the night, which is a really nice contrast of how this remake is going to compare to the original content. For one thing, in the original, you came here by day. Here, you come here by night, which paints a picture that this game's not going to be the same, and that this game might have some darker tones to it, where it's a storyline that you can probably take a little bit more seriously. And while I have been rudely talking over these guys, I have to introduce you guys to Mr. Gardner. He is he was basically in the original, and you did have the same kind of introduction. However, Dogie is being a little rude. Just a tad, but this is more Dogie's show, not adults, for the moment. And, uh... It seems that Mr. Gardner might have some relation to Dogie, and I'm just going about that with the hair color, really. Other than that, I just think they're really good pals, in a sense. Where he, Dogie got in trouble, and basically Gardner pretty much yanked on his ear. So, uh, Mr. Gardner is obviously pretty observant, and... Before we go in more into depth, I really like how this game actually develops on Dogie's character, really. For one thing, Dogie didn't really have much of a background to talk about, at least in the original game. Here, he actually is getting more involved, and you get to learn a lot more about Dogie, Elena, and kind of the town in general, as they're all talking about it, pretty much. So... While the game explains more about the situation, I also like to explain how I really like how this game goes into a this kind of perspective. Because for one thing, 2D just doesn't really work in a sense. Not always. I mean, I know there's good ways to have it work, but for the way that uh, Falcom did it in the original, not so well. So outstanding plus right here as I mentioned in the past so figuratively our heroes make it into the gated community which was once for security in the past now a minor annoyance in today and this theme is one that plays in the original when you enter inside any important houses at all and I kinda like how it's used here because it really adds a calming, serene nature to this town, but it also adds a bit of solemnness to it. Consider and not to mention it's nighttime. It it's really fitting here, and I definitely prefer its use in this situation than say enter every time you enter a house. It changes this music. That would get on my nerves a little bit. And Dogi are already thinking about drinking. Come on, dude. Not everyone likes to drink. See, Elena seems a little offended. But, more importantly, she's mentioning that Chester's actually a hard-working man that goes out at nights to go to his job. So, basically, Dogie could take a life lesson from that. But, Elena is unfortunately having to leave us all alone. Guess it'll just be... us in a room, Dogie. You get your own bed, I get mine. But, uh, Elena's also showing a bit of expression there. And of course Dogie being a smart lad is picking up on that just a tad. So the thing I like about this game is that it does have facial sprites for all the characters basically. All the every character in this game really. And I kinda like how they make use of it by having facial expressions to explain that there might be a bit of, of hidden thoughts behind it, and also to convey that these are human beings, pretty much. Not to mention, Dope Jogi is showing off a bit of jealousy in the sense that Adol just keeps getting everything that he might want. But, we'll talk more about that. I'm pretty sure it won't be a huge thing. Now we get introduced to Margo, and Margo was never in the original game, really. It, it was kind of... It's kind of a good addition here, basically, because it gives us a really good look at Doki's life as a child inside a household. 
And not to mention, it gives a good idea why Dogie's such a good guy. His mother was very kind and caring, though probably a little harsher around the edges here and there. And also, we know that Dogie is not really good with letters and doesn't like to keep in touch, but he's here. He's showing off his muscles here and there. And apparently Dogie was being a little rude and inconsiderate in some respects, or maybe Marco was, but clearly there's a bunch of wonderful showcase here, honestly. I mean, the game definitely immerses you into its environment a lot better than the original did. It just kind of said, hey, you're at this town, you're taking a bit of a walk, passing by guys along the way, and that's about it. So, looks like the boys are going to be fed a nice homemade meal, and I'm pretty sure Dogie is going to make the plate obsolete. <laughs> oh, this is new. Usually we don't get the meanwhile in these kind of games. So we get introduced to the other half of the uh, equation, basically. We get introduced to the possible antagonist of this game. We get a king who apparently seems a little power hungry and a loyal young knight that's probably trying to do the best he can for his country. And unfortunately it seems that this noble man is quite the power hungry guy. Oh boy. Very power hungry. That's definitely not good. And chuckling all about like it's gonna happen. Uh, though the thing that's really nice about this is that it gives you a nice little introduction of your quest because all of the things that this young knight had said earlier, you're going to be going to those areas and they're going to prove to be quite interesting. Another point on the expression, that smug smile. I think he's going to be quite a douchebag. Hmm, an N musical tone, that's kind of nice. And we get greeted with the nice red mod theme. You guys probably would be familiar if, with it if you've played the game at all. But it's definitely a lot calmer and a lot more upbeat. Now, Doki, why are you the hell are you leaving me here all by myself? I'm not really familiar with this area. Not to mention I might like to get introduced to everybody. You know everybody a lot better than... Well, maybe not, actually. I don't kind of beat you to punch. But nevertheless, it looks like he's just going to leave... Elena to do all the work, so what a prick in some respects, but we're not going to look too d down upon that. Next time, guys, we're going to explore more a bit of Red Maw and see what's going to happen, because you know there will be. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and adios. Now, the reason why this video did not totally stop is because I need to do a little bit of extra stuff, mainly to showcase the fact that... You guys need to hear the old music so you can compare it to the new remixed music. I mean, you will be surprised how similar it is, yet how well drawn out it is with the in introduction of musical instruments and basically just really awesome compo or composition altogether. So take a listen to it. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a great day and adios.